and draw people into the church and act delusional? People go, I don't want to go to that church. Those people are delusional. Can I preach? There are so many places in church where people go to church and they say they love God and they're living as sinful as the day is long. Yeah. You know what's happening right now? People are getting sick of that. They look del delusional. They don't want to, people are not drawn to that. They're, they're put away from that because of the delusion. Wait a minute, you say you're a Christian, but you're not praying, you're not giving, you're not fasting, you're not repenting. You don't serve. You don't love him. You don't listen to him. Amen. See, people are looking for a genuine relationship with God. I love all that. Oh, I don't want religion. I want relationship. The question is, what kind of relationship do you want? Because there's a good relationship and there's a bad relationship. There's a healthy relationship and there's a dysfunctional relationship. Come on. Mm, praise God. So in this portion, he tells us to give. But he doesn't say give, you know, 10%. He said give with the right attitude. So what we need to start doing, and I'm not suggesting you come up here and just put a penny or, you know, some change in the offering. You need to give the Lord what you can really give. You can give in service what you can really give. You know, there are some people, you ask them to do something, they say they can't. Yeah, you can. You just didn't want to. We're done that quiet in here. My old pastor used to do, he used to say, I'm going to let that sink in for a while. <laughs> we have to serve God. That's giving. But we've got to give it for the right reason. Not because I want to impress the man that's in the pulpit. I want to impress the man on the throne. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's go on to the next one. In, in verse uh, 5, it says, now we're going to talk about praying. Remember, he said, I said he says it in this order. First he talks about uh, giving. Then he talks about praying. Verse 5, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. And remember, he uses hypocrites over and over again. God's getting tired of hypocrites. You know why he's really tired of hypocrites? Because he warned us not to be a hypocrite. He told us all about it. He said, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the street that they may be seen of men. Seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. That's going to be their reward. An attaboy. Uh oh, isn't he awesome? Isn't he great? Look at how spiritual he is. And that's all you get. Guess what? I am not interested in that. I love you guys. And, and you guys are awesome. But when you come up and tell me, oh, you're so awesome. You did that. You did this. Praise the Lord is what you're going to hear from me. Because I don't want that just to be my reward. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that you're it helpful and it helps you and I love you and I'll continue to do it. But that's not the reward I'm looking for. I'm looking for the reward he has for me. Because see, if I start getting involved in that reward, now I'm going to be like Lucifer and I'm going to be in a position where, oh yes, I'm going to start to believe how great I really am. Come on. Now, last week I preached on, I think I'm the greatest. Thank God we didn't tape that. But there was a different connotation to that. It was, it was this idea of us needing to seek for the best and for the most. And not, uh, um, not settling for less when it comes to God. Not falling for that condemnation. But understanding that we are great. Each one of us. God loves us so much. And we, want, we need to, just like Muhammad Ali, he knew he was the greatest and he was. We need to see. I'm saying Muhammad Ali and I got this thing on. Oh Lord. <laughs> But we also need to be humble in a situation knowing that we're not looking for man's approval, but we're looking for God's approval. And I'm not saying don't. If someone compliments you, say, well, praise God. Or, you know, I'm glad that it was helpful. And there's nothing wrong with that because, see, there is, there, there's persons giving you something. That's okay. But don't let it get to your head. My old pastor used to always tell me, keep letting your shoes. He used to say it all the time. And you know what? I, never, I, didn't, I didn't get frustrated with it because he was right and I knew it. Because I was so over the top on everything. And I was just, you know, ready to take off. And then I, was, I was like a loose cannon. And it took years of the Lord and discipleship and, and of, of the Spirit of God to, to weigh me down. And, and I still need to be weighed down every once in a while. I keep those things. In my, I got to keep lead in my shoes. I got to remember who's in charge. 
Verse 6 says, but thou, when thou prayest, see, he tells you first how not to pray, then he tells you how to pray. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and the Father which sees in secret will reward you openly. That's the second time he said that. The second time he said that. Now, there's nothing wrong, here we go, listen to me close. There's nothing wrong with wanting a reward. There's nothing wrong with seeking a reward because guess what? When we're in sin, we seek rewards. We seek pleasure. We seek to get what we want. We seek this thing that's going to please my flesh. So you're going to do it one way or the other. It's going to be in the spirit or in the flesh. So it's okay in the spirit to seek a reward. I want a treasure. I want that he says he has it for you. So there's nothing wrong with seeking things. It's just making sure you seek in the right attitude. So it says that you're going to, in private, do your giving. Not to say, hey man, I just gave this dude $10,000. Yeah man, I hooked him up. Isn't that, aren't I awesome? Now, people don't usually do it in that blatant form. But you've seen it, how people do do that. They do want to take credit. They want to be seen for their doing. You know, Brother Eric kind of frustrated with this, but... Uh, it works out, I guess, kind of biblically to this concept. Don't be afraid. He was telling people to do the, the giving anonymous, anonymously and if they didn't want anybody to know. That was biblical, brother. I was just frustrated because people kept putting anonymous. I said, how do I know who they are to get the money? <laughs> they said they're going to get $50. Well, who is it and where do I get it? You know. But it was the right concept. Because you don't need to... There, there, is a, there, there are a place I've seen where people give money just to impress the whole church. Oh, yeah. And they shine. Look at how much I gave. Oh, yeah. Guess what? You just got your reward. Yep. But you know, in this place, there's a lot of things that are done under the table. Kind of, you know, just, just done. And it doesn't have to be made a big deal of. As a matter of fact, the guy who was going to give, uh, the, the, he was doing all the outside um, renovations of the, of the church. Of the, what do you call it? Landscaping. I told him that. I told the church. He goes, oh, you should have done that. That was biblical. He wasn't looking for a reward. He's looking for God's reward. He was doing what God told him to do, but he, he's not looking for man to, to pat him on the back. So the next time I mentioned, I made sure that I didn't mention his name. It was a Wednesday night, and only those people know who it is. Uh, Sunday, I just, and I told those people on Wednesday, don't mention his name. That's biblical. I want to make sure that I'm in a position where I do it God's way, giving his way, not for show, Amen. not to impress. Amen. Because then we become a bunch of phonies. There's enough phonies out there. New Hope Med Pentecostal Church needs to be not like the rest. We need, to be, we need to be independent of those things. We need to be extraordinary or extraordinary, as I like to say it. We need to be extraordinary. Sean Connery was extraordinary. Extraordinary. Most things in this ship don't have to go to bullets. That's my Sean Connery. How do I do this? Okay. Wasn't bad. I found the crew of a concert. <laughs> I lost my voice. I can do it better without it. Anyway, I don't know where that ends up in the, in the Word of God. I don't think it does, but it's okay to have fun in church. Can I get amen? amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we are told how to, how to give. We're told how to pray and what attitude. When you're praying, you know, we go and we do our thing. Uh, you know, it's okay. There's a difference, though. It's okay to come to the church and, you know, maybe tell... You know, the leadership or get involved and say, hey, this is something that I've done. Um, or, you know, when we're involved in, in, in prayer and you're, and you're telling the pastor, look, I've been praying and this is how much I've been praying. All you're doing now is getting held accountable. That's different. There's nothing wrong with asking yourself to be held accountable to prayer and to giving because that's something that, you know, we want to perpetuate. We want to keep it going. And when we're held accountable to something, then we may actually keep going. But when we're not held accountable, things tend to flow to the wayside. Can I get an amen? That's real. That's real. So also in our fasting, it says the same thing. When you are fasting, it says don't do it for everybody to see. And we'll get to that in a minute. But it's the same concept. You can, we talk to each other about fasting. We've got a list here of, of what days people are fasting and when. That is not to impress me. Or, and, and if you're doing it that way, you need to take your name off. Yeah. Okay. We're not doing it to show off, look what I'm doing. We're doing it because we're holding each other accountable as Christians that we need to do this. So when you go out into the street, 
You don't need to go around and say, oh, I give this much to the church and oh, I pray this much and I pray six hours a day. That's not, see, you're looking to get that, that approval from man or to impress people. God's not interested in that. That's, you know why? Because that doesn't bring humility. He wants the church to be humble in what we're doing. So this is a really important uh, teaching. This is not real preaching. This is more teaching than anything else. Uh, but we could try to throw some preaching into it by, by the Lord giving his part of it. But understand, this is something that we need to learn as a church because we need to pray and fast. We need to give, but we need to know how to do it the right way, God's way, so that we don't fall into the same trap. Somebody hear me? So that we don't fall into the same traps as Lucifer and anybody else who has followed him and his ways. And that's angels and human beings have all fallen down that trap. So, that is praying. Now, uh, this is an interesting thing I needed to throw in and I'm almost done. One, two, three. Ooh, maybe not. I'm going to have to do this one next week. Oh, Lord. Because I could preach all day, but I'm not sure you guys could hear it all day. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to have to end it with that one. No, that one. And then I'll have one, two, three, four, five. Just do next week. So my, my, my studying is already done for next week. Praise the Lord. Here we go. Verse 8. This is a very interesting, uh, still in Matthew chapter 6. Very interesting concept, but I want you to understand. It says, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask. He already knows what you need before you pray for it. Yeah. Now, why is that important? Many people, uh, hear me close, many people drop out of the realm of prayer when they hear this. They understand it and read it wrong and fall down a trap that they don't need to fall down. Just because God knows what you need does not mean you don't have to ask. That's right. Because he wants you to come to him. Amen. See, when my wife is in trouble, I don't want her going to somebody, her, her job, and, and go to the teacher and say, hey, I need your help. I may know what's going on in her life, but I still want her. I'm her husband. I'm her man. I want her coming to me. She starts going and doing all her intimate stuff and needs with somebody else. That's a problem for me. I'm her husband. She needs to talk to me. It's the same thing with God. He knows what you're going through and he wants you to seek him for help. You know who we go to? Oprah. We go to grandma. We go to our aunt's uncle's second cousin twice removed. We go to the internet. You know how many people have been lost going on the internet and searching out a controversial subject and, and they didn't have someone there to guide them and they get completely taken off on the craziest tangents that you would ever know. Because see, if you don't know the word that well, don't go and try to do that by yourself. Make sure you got somebody with you that can help. Because see, I can do that. I can go into the word and I can look at the different debates and I can see which, okay, this one's on this side of the debate and this one's on this side of the debate and then I can go into the word to designate who's correct. But some people just see this and go, ah! there's the answer without studying this other concept and knowing the you know finding the truth uh, I believe I'm an apologist I'm like a lawyer for the Lord I'm gonna find the truth by reading the Word of God you can say this and you can say that but I'm gonna go into the Word of God and it's going to tell me what I need to know God's not gonna uh, uh, lead me down a road without giving me an answer or a guide so you got to be careful when you do it but people go to all over the place instead of go to God but he already knows what you need. But he still wants you to seek him for it. Now let me tell you why. Because see, we, <laughs> somebody hear me, we think we know what we need. Oh, yeah. We think we know what's right for us. Or, or, oh, I know what I need. No, you don't. Just because this is your body, which is not technically yours, you're on loan. This, is your, this body is not your own. Uh, but the idea is that he knows what you need. So the reason why you got to pray to him is because he knows what you need. But when you come to him, most often it's not for what you need. It's for what you want. Oh, yeah. Whew, wow. And he is going to tell you in prayer, that's not what I want for you. That is going to kill you. This is what I want. 
So that is why one of the most important reasons to go to God with the things that you need is because you are praying for X, Y, Z and God's saying, I got ABC for you. Are you hearing me? We think we got the plan. We know what's going on. I, I'm telling you, there's so many times I thought I know what I was doing. And when I got to God in prayer, he said, you are so far off. Thank God you talked to me. Because who knows what road you would have ended up on doing what you thought was right. Remember, our thoughts are not his thoughts. We can get as close as we can through the word of God, but we still live in this ball of filthy flesh. That thank God the Lord can clean up for us. Just enough to get us into heaven. But when we get there, whoo-wee. There's, some, there's going to be things we learned and we're going to be like, oh my goodness, what a train wreck that would have been if I did it my way. Yeah. What a train wreck that would have been. All the things that would have happened if I did it the way I thought necessary. So I just needed to throw that in there. He knows what you need, but it does not mean that you don't need to go to him. He wants you to ask and there's reasons. Verse 16, we're almost done. Two more, we're finished. Verse 16 says, and we're still in Matthew chapter 6. And he's gone down the line talking about first giving, then prayer. Now he's talking about fasting. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites. Does that sound familiar? Be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their face, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Once again, you're giving, hey, look at me, look at what I gave, I am the man, that's all you're going to get. A good a boy from a couple of people, and you do not get the reward from God. You go out there and pray, oh, Jesus, oh, Lord, oh, God. So people can say, wow, you're so spiritual. You're so spiritual. You're, can I hang out with you? Will you take me out? Can I be, can I be your friend? That's your reward. Yeah. See, what all this is about is bringing humility to the church. There, is, there are places where, they, you know, it's so funny you'll have churches, and, and I'm just giving you some stories I've heard. I'm not going to tell you where because I'm not trying to put anybody down. But there's this one church I know where the, every week the same person gave interpretation. Every week the same person gave interpretation. That wasn't about God. That was about, look at me. Look at how spiritual I am. Yeah. I'm going to give interpretation and you're going to see that I'm of God. Then they mess around and God will make a fool out of you if you're too careful. You're not too, uh, they gave an interpretation about this woman and what God was going to do in this woman's life. And you know, you got to be careful because tongues and interpretation is about edifying the church. That's what the word says. It's not about saying, oh, bless God, Francine. You had better get, the Lord spoke to me. You better get your act together. You're going to burn, girl. You know, people love to point people out and tell them what they're supposed to be. That's, that's not, she's not the church. These things are for the edification of the church. So this person was singling out a person, uh, giving tongues and interpretation. Some of you might have heard this before because I might have said it. And, and talk about this woman. And, and when it was all said and done, you know, uh, I don't know if someone came to that prayer. I don't know how this came out. But that person wasn't actually a woman. It was a man. Oh. Ouch. So that wasn't coming from God because God knew that. <laughs> God was not fooled by the clothing and by the whatever was on that person, whether they were convincing or not. It, it, it was obviously not from God. And guess what? That person got the reward. First they got, you know, the, you know, the being the glowing person of the church and everybody's, you know, giving them the accolades. But the second one is you got made a fool of. Because you were playing with God. Come on church, let's not play with God. When you come in this place, bless God, you get yourself repented and then you can open up and you can carry on as much as you want. But don't come in here all full of sin and, and, and try to get all this attention. Let's get attention from him. Amen. Listen, I want y'all to get to know each other better. I want y'all to spend time together because we're a family. But, but, but don't be leaning on each other for what God is supposed to give. God is our leader. God is the king. Don't try to impress each other. Try to impress God. Don't go over to somebody and try it because they're so spiritual. You don't know what's going on in their life. 
Let's, let's be humble people in this church. Because guess what? People need to come in these doors and they need to see something different than they see everywhere else. I'm tired of seeing it. Oh, I go to some places and I have trouble stomaching what I hear and what I see. But I just put on my smile. Bless God. Love you. It's good to see you. I got to get out of here, man. Because you drive me crazy. Because I want to say something. I want to do something. But see, that would be out of line. It's not my place. I am not God. It's not my job to correct them, but it's my job to make sure we are not like that. Can I get an amen? amen. Mm, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When we're in a position of fasting, if you want to go around, oh, I'm so hungry. Oh, don't I look hungry? Oh, my belly's growling so loud. I need to eat. But I can't because I'm fasting. <laughs> See how spiritual I am? I'm really suffering. But I'm not going to eat because I'm a Christian. I'm fasting. Don't be pointing fingers. <laughs> People over <laughs> We've got to come. What does it say? It says, wash your face. It says that they disfigure their faces and they appear men, it says, men to fast. They're showing that they're fasting. It says, verily I say to you, they have the reward. But thou, when thou fast, anoint thy head. Go, go in the prayer closet and pray, God, give me strength to them. Leaning on you, God. I need you, God. I'm not going to rely on food. I got a little storage anyway, so I'm okay. I'm not going to die. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rely on God to get me through my day. That's how you anoint your head. So then when you go out in public, you're not like, mm. Oh, oh, you can lift up your head, you've washed your face, you are clean, and you go along your day, functioning fine. Now there is something that I did have to do, and this is, uh, for anybody who does any extended fasting, I once did an extended fast, and, and I had to warn some people, because if you've ever fasted in an extended period of time, after about five days, your words start to slur. And you lose your equilibrium, and you know, I was like bumping into walls, and, 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 and you know, I'm an ex-drug addict, so I had to be sure that people understood that I'm not in a relapse state here, I'm, I'm not using drugs or drinking, and so I did have to go to my boss and say, just so you know, in about three days, you know, you might see a change in me, and that's just, you know, so I don't get fired. Okay, that's different. That's not, that's not, you're not getting a reward. You're not seeking a reward for men. You're, you're just making sure that people understand and positions who may need to understand. The best thing we'll be able to do is be able to just stay home for seven days and be able to just, you know, be able to go through that and not have to like show people that you're, you're struggling with it. But most of us can't do that. You know, we can't just take a week off. And in the summertime, I work in the school, so a summertime would be a good time for me to do that because then I'm actually at home and I can you know, go through those things and not have to be public about it. Uh, but understand that we have to have the right attitude. Verse 18 says, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father. Who are you trying to impress? I should have named, I should have named the title, Who Are You Trying to Impress? Yeah. Who are you trying to impress? Because it says not to impress man, but the father which is in secret. And what's going to happen? He is going to reward you openly. So we, we, we look for things, and, and, and I've got about one or two more weeks of fasting to preach, and I got, I got, I, I'm going to look forward to move on because I like to do more evangelical type preaching. But, you know, I'm a pastor, so sometimes I've got to teach, and I've got to get some foundational things built in the church. But understand that when you're in a position of, of fasting, we have got to have the right attitude. You know, I'm going to preach in a couple of days on, on what things we pray for. And that's the reward, or when to, when to fast. When do we fast? What is it that I need to fast for? Uh, right now, I'm in a position where I've got an event coming up that I've been fasting for for about two months. I've done different kind of fasts, and you know, because you don't have to, and we'll talk more about that next week also, what different kind of fasts you have, uh, and what kind of fasts there are. Uh, I'm going to actually end with the idea of asking you to join me in a fast Monday through Thursday of this week. I've got several people that have already committed to that. Um, but the idea is that is the reward. Some of us need a victory. Some of us may be struggling with smoking or struggling with, uh, you know, pornography or, or struggling with vulgarity or, or, or words that we are not supposed to say. We may be struggling with anger. We may be struggling with stealing. I was a big old klepto when I was a kid. I swear. See, the stealing is a very selfish thing. And, and I, was, I had very addictive behaviors even as a child. And so uh, one of the core things of addiction is selfishness. So, you know, I don't care who's, I want it. 
And I will take it from you because I want it. And that's just the way it is. And so, you know, fortunately the Lord has changed that in me. Uh, but, you know, if you're, if you're constantly stealing things, when we begin to pray and fast, the victory is, you know, you don't pray and fast for, oh, I need $10,000. I need ten. I got to pay my bills, and you know, if we're not good with our money now, and we're expecting God to just give us, you know, what He wants you to do is become, you know, mature. You know, but some people really have problems where it's, you know, the, the economy the way that it is. There's lots of people who make good money and they just can't make it because of the economy. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people who go out and, and have to have the newest everything, and then they have no money for the basic necessities. That's a problem. People who gamble. Oh, that's another one. I, when they built that casino, about made me sick. Oh, oh, it's going to bring jobs. Yeah, right. And it's going to cost most of the community a whole lot of money that they can't afford to give because they don't have the ability to control themselves. Yeah. So maybe it's, maybe it's a victory over gambling. Whatever it may be, that is the victory that you're looking for. See, I'm looking for a victory because there's some things that, are, that have been taken from me and I want them back. I want to do, uh, when we do our, maybe for spring conference, uh, our spring conference, I want to do that song. I want, I want it all back. Everything that you took from me, I want it. I want it back. I lost things that I really should have lost. And when I lost them, I'm like, well, God, I don't know what you do because I was praying and fasting when I lost them. But at that point, you turn to God and say, you are in control. You know what's going on. You know what you're doing. And I don't. And I'm just going to surrender to your will. But that don't mean I can't pray and fast to get it back. So praise God, I'm going to be doing that this week. But we need to remember who are we trying to impress. How much more, this is my last slide, how much more should fasting be common practice in our lives? Common, let me tell you something. And it's, it's, I'll tell you why it's hard for me to keep it. That's why I switch it around because the no food fast, what I'm going to start telling you about, the only fast I'm going to describe it now is the no food fast and the Daniel fast because I have to get the other ones later. Don't have time today. The no food fast is hard because right, it just, there's no really kids in here so I can just kind of be a little bit more open. But when you have a no food fast, the first day you eat, it goes right through you. It's so uncomfortable. You get diarrhea all the time all the time and especially if you're like me you're supposed to eat like broth and bread and I'm like steak pizza I'm hungry and I'm gonna eat uh, but the idea is that you know it goes right through so it's difficult then it takes a couple of days for your body to get back on track and and, you, and your you know your insides get a little jacked up now it's also got a healthy attribute it also cleanses your system I mean fasting is people who are not even in church do it as, as a cleansing process but it can be uncomfortable, so we got to keep doing it, even if it's uncomfortable. God doesn't say, well, I don't require it because you don't like it or because it makes you feel uncomfortable. We've got to learn to come outside of our comfort zone to do what God asked us to do. The other fast is the Daniel fast. And the Daniel fast is what I'm going to ask you to do after I read this last portion of scripture. According to the word of Jesus, it is the duty, it is the duty of every disciple, every believer, to pray, fast, and give. Now that's a pretty big word. It is a duty. It is a responsibility. It is not a maybe. It is something that we have to do in order to, among other things that the Word of God says, in order to be what, what Jesus asks us to be as Christians. Last one. I want us all to stand. Praise God. Who I'm so glad you joined us today. There are some people, there's some commotion going towards the back. There are people that are going to be serving. There's going to be some food available for us. After church, after we pray for a little while, I'm going to pray for that food and we'll have the fellowship and have a good time. Some of us are going out to eat. Uh, I'm going to be going to Golden Corral. If anybody wants to go, if they can afford to go, they're welcome to go. Uh, Brother Peter said it clearly, silver and gold, have I not? I am not a... Wealthy man according to the monetary expectation. Uh, but I'm very wealthy in many other things. Okay, children, I need you to be quiet for a second because I need to ask the church for some help. I've got something coming up on Friday. I'm going to ask the church to join me in fasting Monday through Thursday. This is not a requirement. Uh, you may have things that are going on in your life as well. Uh, so you're not, you don't have to just pray and fast for me. 
but I'm asking for your help. Uh, on Friday, this coming Friday, is my hearing, and I will be going to uh, try to get back what the devil stole from me. I'll be going and trying to get some things restored, and I believe after six years that the Lord is going to bring some restoration to my life. Amen. I believe part of that reason, praise God, is that when I had those things taken from me, I didn't stop living for God. I didn't throw a fit on God. I didn't get mad at God. I said, God, you are in control, and I will wait as long as you require to get what I'm supposed to get. If you say no now, that's all right. And now everything is lined up. It, it might go completely south. It might not go well at all. Uh, I don't think that's what's going to happen, but I'm preparing myself because court is a scary place to be. Uh, to have everything in a judge's hand is a scary thing to have happened. But I want to ask the church, a Daniel fast is when you only eat vegetables and water. No sodas, no candy, no sugar, no uh, meat, no flour, no dairy, just vegetables and water. Now, you may, you may decide to throw juice in that mix or, or, or juice and fruit. That's up to you. The fasts are not always just one way. I hate people who say there's only one fast and that's it. That's not true. There's many different kind of fasts we'll talk about next week. I'm going to ask those that are going to join me to join into that Daniel fast for four days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. You don't have to do them all four days. You can pick a day. You can do every day. That's up to you. But I want to ask how many people are going to help the pastors and who's going to join me in prayer and fasting. Uh, I just want to see a show of hands who's going to help me out. It can be one day or all the days. That's up to you. I I'm looking for some help. But I also want you to pray and fast for yourself, not just for my situation. Praise God this is going to help you get into a, a routine of prayer and fasting. And I believe God is going to do what he promised. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and clap. You can clap on that one. Amen. Now, we're going to have an altar call. I'm going to give the church an opportunity to come pray. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a long altar call. Today was more like teaching than preaching, but what's important, excuse me children, shh, shh. What's important as I give you an opportunity to make some dedications to God, to rededicate yourself to God, to commit yourself to the things that have been brought across the pulpit from the Word of God. So I want to give you that opportunity today to pray. So is there anyone who feels like the Lord is calling them to make some commitments to Him? Anybody feel like they need to pray to the Lord? These altars are open give you the opportunity to take some time to develop some intimacy with God. Praise Lord. All the things we talked about today, getting involved in those things will, without a doubt, bring intimacy into your life. That intimacy with God.